another beauty. What is that? Yeah, uh, plexiform neurofibroma, did you say? Yeah. That is a good thought because it does have a multinodularity, and that, that brings up a great, uh, great question, which we'll discuss. That's not what this is, but I appreciate that, um, that point because there is certainly a multinodularity. What, um, any other ideas? Myofibroma. So these become pretty easy once you've seen a few of them, but at first glance, they can be quite confusing for a few reasons, okay? So I'll tell you the features here. This bi another biphasic tumor. You have these nodules, okay? These nodules are called myoid nodules because they're supposed to be kind of myofibroblastic or muscle-like, even though these tumors usually express actin, but not much desmin or no desmin usually in my experience. But this one, you can kind of see how they look a little muscle-ish, myoid, because they're kind of pink. But a lot of times, the predominant color of these nodules is blue. So I think they can be so blue that they look mixoid or they even look chondroid, pseudochondroid is what I like to call it. I, I think that I've made that up because people always talk about them being myoid, but I'm like, most of the time when I see them, they don't really look myoid. And I've had people send me biopsies of myofibroma thinking it was a mixoid tumor or thinking that it was a cartilaginous type of tumor. So I think that this kind of mixoidy or chondromixoid looking nodularity is often, often the case that the pink gives way to blue. So don't let that confuse you. And then in between these nodules is cellular substance filling the space between the nodules. Let's go out here and look, because this is where it looks really nice. These cellular areas are more primitive looking cells, kind of round to spindle cells, very bland usually. They don't usually have a tipier pleomorphism although they sometimes can have mitoses and even can, you can get some necrosis in these occasionally, uh, particularly larger ones in young kids. Um, and these are basically um, like kind of parasitic cells, kind of similar to the cells you'd see like in a glomus or a myoparasitoma. Um, and uh, now in the more recent WHO, myoparasitoma and myofibroma are kind of like grouped together um, into a similar related category, which is kind of interesting. So this stuff is kind of related to what you'd see in myoparasitomas. And then you have these, these uh, cellular spindled areas with dilated kind of branching vessels, often kind of with a staghorn or hemangioparasitic appearance. And in fact, in the past, uh, there was a tumor called infantile hemangioparasitoma. And now we recognize that that tumor is actually probably just a very exuberant form of myofibroma and that the use of that term has been discouraged. Um, so in any case, that's what you're going to see. These multiple myoid nodules, often with a kind of bluish pseudochondroid appearance. And then in between the nodules, this cellular um, zone of a spindle to round cells with branching dilated vessels. Very nice. And these tumors are totally benign. They rarely recur, even when they're, um, even when they're partially removed. I've seen one that did kind of persist and grow back a little bit. And sometimes they even regress on their own. So these were, are you know, most well-known, I think, for being in children where they can be multifocal. Babies can be born with many of them. Sometimes they even involve the internal organs, in which case they can actually be serious and fatal, even though it's a benign tumor. If a patient's born with like 100 of them in their lungs, there's going to be a problem, right? So um, we, uh, we recognize that they, they're in kids and multifocal, but also they can be solitary and they can be in adults, even old adults. I've seen these in elderly patients even. Um, usually as solitary lesions, although occasionally I've seen adults with like two of them or, or something, which is always kind of interesting. So um, a real good thing to recognize, benign and beautiful. And um, let's go back to the point that you made about plexiform neurofibroma. So I see exactly why you thought of that. And I think that's really important that you br bring up because a lot of times when we look at a plexiform neurofibroma, it, the first thing that strikes us is its multinodularity. All of those twisty infiltrating nerve trunks, when you cut through them, they look like multiple nodules packed together. So the thing is, is that a lot of other tumors are multinodular, but not truly plexiform, not that three-dimensional bag of worms look. But under the microscope, multinodular and plexiform can really look very, very similar and identical. And it can lead us to call things that have a multinodular appearance and get them confused with plexiform neurofibroma. I would say that the one thing that would help in here, this stuff could look a little bit like what you see in neurofibroma, kind of irregular haphazard spindle cells. The cellular zones out here are a little bit unusual, although diffuse type neurofibroma can get sheets of round cells sometimes. I got a neurofibroma video on YouTube that's kind of long, and in there I show a case, I think, of a diffuse neurofibroma, and that can be very confusing for people. 
uh, because of the round cell kind of look that they have sometimes. But um, uh, in, in this case, though, I think that the look is a bit different, but the multinodularity can really confuse you. And it's these nodules that I found give people the most trouble when I've had myofibromas sent to me in the past. Okay, any questions about myofibroma? Uh, Dan Hung uh, Wen is saying that, that actually what they see is not so much of the hypercellularity over at the edges, but these kind of less cellular areas that are bulging and growing into pushing into vessel lumens and that in the pediatric population, he sees uh, this as kind of a more typical sort of uh, feature. That's really cool. Thank you for sharing that with me. I, I love learning new things um, about morphology because, you know, molecular is cool, but there's always to me like something about seeing these little fine visual details that, that really makes pathology so fascinating and sometimes very diagnostic helpful when we find those. Okay, so what's uh, number five? Let me go over to the other profile. I think it's better. Yeah, this is just another example of myofibroma. Yeah. See, sometimes I trick you and put the same thing twice. This one looks a little different than the last one, right? It does have some of that myoid nodule, but certainly not that doesn't look quite as like strikingly biphasic. The nodules are a little bit more poorly formed and kind of, you can really see that they have kind of a, a muscle sort of appearance. I, again, I think of these as more kind of pericyte or myofibroblast rather than true smooth muscle. Um, and then sometimes the, the nodules can be kind of smaller and, and kind of poorly formed. I think that those can be a little trickier to recognize. But again, you get the kind of branching, uh, clefting, hemangioperiocytic type uh, staghorn vessel growth and some va vascular channels in here that are kind of tangled up in the mix of it. So that's pretty cool. So just two uh, different kind of flavors. And then a bit more of that that looks like the nodules kind of in the last one. Okay. And I guess this is more of that kind of pushing growth, kind of looks like it's growing into the lumen of vascular channels um, that Van was um, mentioning. Well, I mean, they're, they're put in the W, so the question is, uh, you know, is there really a difference between myofibroma and myopericytoma, um, and how do we really distinguish? So for one, I don't know if we really need to distinguish because they both are benign, although there have been rare exceptions of malignant forms of myopericytoma. I've seen one or two, and, um, but they're quite rare. But, I, but for the benign ones, I mean, they're both benign. They both can involve vessels, and you shouldn't get worried about that. To me, I think the difference that I think of is that I think of myopericytoma as being composed pretty much entirely of this cellular round to spindle pericytes, and it often has this whirling, swirling growth around vascular channels within the lesion, and it doesn't tend to have these kind of hypocellular myoid nodule areas. I feel like when I see those myoid nodules, that's going to point me to myofibroma, 